Welcome to the ISRC recap. This is the recap for race number four that we had at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Um, honestly, I think it was a great race. And in the booth with me tonight, I have the host of the league. That's going to be uh, Andrew Combs. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. So um, overall race, we did 80 laps out on the track. Uh, all it was a green flag run. No, no stage, uh, no stages. We're used to doing stages with the ISRC Pro Circuit. Um, I honestly like the green flag run the best. That was that went really well. And from my viewing point, I, I felt like it was uh, it was a good run. Even though we did have a couple cautions, they weren't heavy cautions that took out the field like that could have happened with Charlotte. Um, they were pretty clean. A little bit of trading, you know, uh, trading some paint and then dropping down and touching the wall, but nothing nothing too uh, severe for a lot of the drivers out there. That's what happens, especially when you get so many cards on track. It's you're just gonna get wrecks in general, and you know, giving people the fast repaired people were were willing to race a little bit harder. I saw and go down and take their fast repair a little later if they got themselves into some issues. Yeah, but um, for uh, 25 drivers on that track, I think we had a total of six cautions. Um, I would say four of those cautions were just people touching the wall and then having to regain uh, some stability. And which were like just minor driving incidents. We did have we did have a couple, um, I, I would say col like <laughs> collisions, but a lot of the drivers up in the front pack were able to keep it straight. Like you, you'd see him go sideways, and then the guy next to him who did maybe would have pushed him or who pushed him a little bit or maybe touched him, um, kept straight and would straighten out the other guy's car. And they did a good job trying to help each other out and get each other back onto the track without, uh, you know, really causing any further damage to the other person's car. Yeah, and I think a couple of those, those incidents were just a lot of new people getting used to the racers that they were around because we we had some pro drivers on the track. For instance, I know Ruben Garcia Jr., he got himself into an incident. I think he was the one of the first ones. Yes, he, he, he uh, it was that caution he, lap three, I believe. <laughs> yeah, and you, you, you saw that he, he got into somebody, which, to be quite honest, that's just going to happen in the early going. It's no fault of his own, but he, got, he kind of had to adjust his driving style to suit our league more because you, you saw that he was really aggressive in the early goings yeah. and then you kind of saw him back off a little bit and you know get get racing while you know they just kind of yeah him relaxed him while the the race. they uh they backed off a little bit and then they just they found their footing and then they just took it away from there about i'd say when we did the green flag pit stop halfway through um they were doing a great job just going back and forth with um with robbie Audi and the number 12 and Robbie drove a really dominant race, and I think these 1.5 mile tracks are really his strong suit. Like you always see him kind of leading these races, and you know, just in general controlling. That's, but like when you have the draft as close as it was, the, the, I'm kind of surprised that more people weren't able to challenge him. Yeah, he uh, he was running down a really fast time, and I, I think it honestly one of the best races I've seen him run up in the front. Um, he was doing a good job, just kind of keeping keeping himself clean, but also just. Every time someone would get around him, he'd throw a quick counter and, and swing around them again. So he didn't really give people much room to get ahead of him. You know, he had the eight, he had the eighty seven beat him out of the, out of the pits. But other than that, you know, it was a pretty dominating race by him and the field position position that he had. Um, I'm sitting here looking at the race results and his average lap time was a forty five point nine oh one. And of the twelve, wait, how many cars we have? We had uh, of the seventeen cars we had running at the end. The closest person to him, average lap time wise, was Jaden Kurtasi. And I think he drove one of the most underrated races, especially for. I mean, he started third, yes, but he, he was the closest to Raviati in consistent track time. And he was almost there at the end for the win. He just kind of drove a little bit of an underrated race. Yeah. Um, you know, he was up in the beginning for the start. And then he really dropped back for most of the race. He was racing in the, the backpack to like even, I would say, like the rear of the pack. Um, with a lot of his teammates, uh, you did have Andrew Ruiz up in the front, really pushing, and then but it was pretty much um, Jimmy Gawker and then uh, Jane Cortasi out, pretty much just hanging out in the back. Uh, I think they were trying to find their footing a little bit since the field was so big. It definitely brings in a different element to where some of the guys, you know, they back off a little bit and they just kind of want to get a pulse for the race and see how people handle it. Well, one of the biggest issues I found was that passing became a little difficult after the first two laps. Like once <laughs> once the car started. To no, I'm serious. Like once you once you got underneath somebody after like two laps of green flag racing, that car on the outside would kind of just hang there for two three laps, and I was victim not to that, but 
I was victim of getting caught up behind it. And in the early goings, I think I was running around ninth place. Two cars were battling side by side in front of me, and Spencer Boyd is running me down because I can't go anywhere. So it just kind of highlighted the characteristics of Charlotte's oval track, just especially under night con- nighttime conditions where you think passing should be optimized. Yeah, and you know, I, I think um, I think you're completely correct. And we saw Robbie Yachty do the same thing. He ran that outside line, and pretty much anyone that went on the inside of him that you know was maybe trying to set up a crossover or a pass, uh, he just run them down. Uh, that that outside line was pretty fast, and he just pretty much held it and kept you know kept it in his pocket so people couldn't take it away from him. And I, and I think that's something that Robbie does really well. I mean, he he does have a bit of an ego on the track, and I and I don't mean to say that to insult him, but he is a really good driver, and you can see that in his racing. And I mean, let he led sixty eight of the eighty nine last year ended up running, which is large majority. And quite frankly, when he wasn't out front, he was still on the, in the top five. So it, he never really fell outside the top five all race, I think. Uh, he, I think he had one section where he had to work himself back up. But yeah, no, he was he was up there. Um, I, I want to look at the lap graph here because this this will tell me. Yeah, lap but, chart. Here no, we go. he had a great run. Um, and I, I usually say he he races with his uh, his heart on his shoulders. Um, honestly, I think he he drove the best i've seen uh, out of him racing uh this this race he seemed a little more um present minded and less uh less uh, i'd say less frustrated with sometimes because sometimes he, he seems to get a little frustrated with some of the drivers i think this time he he just stayed calm and he did what he does best which is kind of play play with some of the other drivers if he if he feels like he's confident enough to to beat them um he will he will keep some things in his back pocket and he'll kind of just uh, what's the word? He, he, it's not like playing playing with them, but he'll uh, he'll run lines and just kind of do what he does best, which is kind of put you in a situation where you have to burn your tires and and really work to get around him. And when it comes to when it comes to that, that's kind of like his his bread and butter is really just kind of working that line and making you burn yourself out trying to catch him, which is honestly probably the worst thing you can do uh, racing against Rabiati. You kind of just want to follow him. And then when it comes down to the wire, then you can jump on it and go after him. He's one of those guys you have to pace out because he has no problem putting himself in the position he needs to be to watch you just, you know, wear your car out. And to go back on that comment, the, he was only outside the top five for three laps this race, and it was after the green flag pit stops on lap 64. Yeah. So that was really only a time he saw himself outside, which – Almost seems reminiscent of some of what drivers are able to do today in the real world that people are able to, you know, just once they take control of a race, they keep it. And that's something he does well. But the I think the only downfall to his game is that he ends up, he like you said, he raises with the tar on his shoulder. So he, if he gets mad, he... You gets can see mad it on the track. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I think I think this this whole race he he was very calm and cool and collective and and played it to a strong suit. So I, I think he did really well. And I actually want to see him race the road course and see how he handles that uh, next uh, next race. I think that's going to be um, in Ohio. Yeah, yeah that that's going to be a lot of fun to see those guys kind of come back and see what happens on the track. Because if we have the same turnout, uh, you know, roughly twenty five cars, it's it's going to be a very very interesting race uh, to say the least. And I think he knows that he's at a points deficit as well. I mean, he's 115 points behind the chase right now after that race, which is the equivalent of coming in third place with no bonus points. But that would that would mean nobody shows up in front of him. So, and in all honesty, he's got a deficit to make up. He does have a deficit to make up, but he's one of those guys you never count count out. Um, he'll come up and and show a lot of people up. He's he's a good driver, so. I think he can easily make up those points if he shows up. Um, what I'm actually curious to see is next race, if the 88 and a couple of the other pros are going to come back uh, like they seem like they will, um, they they looked good on the track. Um, some of them you know, took a little bit longer to, to kind of find out where they're at. But um, you know, I, I think they're going to put in some time and show you guys up <laughs> in the next race. And I, I want to see how they handle the road course because that's, that's definitely going to be something um, – that's that's gonna throw a lot of uh it's gonna throw a wrench into the into the engine and i i think a lot of people are gonna have to really back off a little bit and and hopefully put in the time during the week so that they have uh what they need to to handle the race when it comes up on sunday 
Honestly, I'm kind of already scared of what they did because after we talked pre-race and I jumped into the practice session, Ruben Garcia Jr. was P2 on the board right behind Robbie. <laughs> and I was sitting there like, well, where did this come from? I was kind of, I was kind of expecting him to be top 10, but he's P2 already. So, And then you saw Daniel die. He was all he was really consistent on race. He was oh yeah. He was up there when it mattered. And Spencer Boyd, our other driver who showed him the field, you could tell he was really good on, on a long run. Yeah. So like when when you started to make laps, he was gaining and gaining and gaining. And I think the only time he ever fell away from me was when he had a little slip up, but which was in the early going. He unfortunately retired from the race with some damage, but he I, I contacted him. He said he had a blast and he would looking forward to coming back. No, that's that's awesome. Glad to have him race with us, and I th- I think it's some good publicity for for the overall experience of ISRC. I, I know I know we've sometimes had some rough runs, but uh, honestly, that last race was really good. And you know, that's for for how long this league's been around and where it's going. I think this this season, if uh, if we keep mov- moving in the same direction, I think we're gonna have a, a really strong turnout when it comes to season 11 for the type of quality of racers that should be on the track. I think, I think it'll yeah. be a good show, but I, I think I this also, season is... I saw a massive increase in drivers, you know, like after I made the post that we were having the pro drivers come out, if you include <laughs> the pro drivers, I think I accepted 20 league requests in two days oh, to, jo- to join the league. So I was sitting there like, where are all these people coming from? <laughs> Who are these people? And like, yeah, like Kevin Foster, I raced with him in ASR. He's a really yeah. good driver. We're all handwork. He was he owns um he owns core, right? That's correct, um, yeah. Or yeah. Carl, he owns core. He's a great guy. I love to talk to him. I mean, and then there's a bunch of other people that showed up yesterday that I was like, who are you? Like I I've never heard of you before. Like Trevor Erhart, I was having a conversation with him last night. He seemed pumped to be racing in the league. Blake McKinney, he came back after a long extended break. Uh other people like Gary Wright and um who else was on the list? Noah Mowry. Do you know who was someone that, that I, I hadn't seen in a bit? The someone that I haven't seen in a bit was Blaze McKinley. I, I don't think I've seen him maybe race once, and that guy came out swinging. That was some beautiful driving by him and aggressive driving. He was he's been one of those members that's been around since the early days. He he was kind of around in season one, and I think he was present until three or four, and then he kind of took like a little bit of a hiatus, and he's been racing yeah. occasionally ever since. I but think, when he does show up, he makes an impact. Yeah, I think he's only been in one of the other races that I broadcast. Like it was, it was a, a I maybe saw him once because his name looked familiar. I just <laughs> couldn't have put a thumb on it when I've seen him. But yeah, no, he came out swinging and he he put on a good show. So I hopefully he comes back for the next race. I want to see I want to see most of the field return. I think uh, if we keep moving on, this is going to be a good turnout for everyone out there. I kind of can't wait to see how everybody reacts to Mid Ohio next week because. If you ask me, Mid Ohio is kind of one of the underrated road courses on the NASCAR schedule, in on really any schedule because, and this is a track that I know near and dear to my heart because it's one of the ones that I go to consistently, which and it always provides some good looking racing despite the TV coverage that usually gets put out there, because 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 you got turn basically turns one, two, and three are all interesting corners on that track. The first yeah. one being, it's kind of a high speed corner and you. And you kind of occasionally see somebody mess that, mess the exit up and get off into the grass and mm-hmm. come spinning back across. Then you got the keyhole, which is the tight hairpin braking, which going up the hill and which always gets almost always gets a wreck and it somebody ends up spinning around. And then you get the rundown in the turn three, which is that tight right hander going downhill, which you you almost always see somebody screw that braking zone up and go flying off into the gravel trap. So. When we get to Mid Ohio, it's going to be a real test of the skill because those three corners, I think, are going to be high level passing zones. Yeah, it sounds like you're going to have to put up some practices during the week to get some guys in there yeah. to, to run that because uh, <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> definitely going to need some time on Ohio. I, I've honestly probably maybe seen one race on there on iRacing, so I don't have as much experience with Ohio um, as you would. So uh, I, I think if if that's the case, I think some other people might not have as much experience. So uh, definitely some practices need to open up to get those guys the time they need to uh, to get acclimated to that track. Yeah, road courses aren't usually like popular with NASCAR i racers. They don't they don't tend to like them as much. I, I'm not that good on them, but I still have a blast when I do run them. I think road courses so... bring out some amazing driving that you don't 
get all the time on oval where oval you get some really good pack driving close quarters action and it's, it's kind of <laughs> you're, you're like sweating on your palms because you're driving so close to someone where road courses it's it's almost like a it's like a duel sometimes you see two people like just going at it and you know who's the better uh, of both and then you know another person lines up because those guys were fighting and they they come into the the fray and then it's another duel sets off while the other person takes away so it's kind of a it's you know it's you you have a challenger walking up behind you almost every every corner you know hey <laughs> fighting you for this position so it's it's a little bit more of a, a one-on-one challenge on the track and then that person either wins or loses and then they take off a little bit and then the next person lines up as long as the field hasn't stretched out too far but um i, th- I think we're going to see some really good racing on there and road courses are one of those tracks that where you see kind of people who are maybe average oval racers really like take off like you see Andrew Singleton, he's he's probably got the most road course wins in the league. Yeah. Like, he does really well whenever we go to the Charlotte Roval, and he's always up there when we're racing for Watkins Glen. So, and Dylan Alt, sometimes, he, he's he's kind of a road course lit ringer for the league, and he'll show up and give Andrew Singleton a battle occasionally. So, yeah, I haven't seen honestly, that, that's something I look forward to. In a while. So, hopefully. Yeah, he, he, we offered him the spot in the uh, pro circuit and he declined it. I'm not exactly sure why. I just don't think he was too interested in running the cup cars, which Makes is sense. completely up to him, which, yeah, a lot of people don't like these cars. I'm a fan of them personally. Yeah, they, they, they can Both be a little tough to drive sometimes. Yeah, and the, the way that – and I, I've always been an adamant person on the top-level car in the league – the, the top level car in the real world mm-hmm. so like i'm not gonna go put the xfinity car as our top level league in right. the cup car as our championship series like that's not how i operate and that's like for your average viewer that of nascar or not i racing that kind of looks weird putting the yeah car that's supposed to be the top car as the second tier car yeah that makes sense well uh i think that was a, a pretty good recap of the race uh once again don't forget to tune in for ohio uh, is there any last words you you have andrew before i uh i end it uh no no do a good job all right there you have it once again thank you to our sponsor for this series uh or for the pro circuit which is a uh, big evil designs don't forget to check them out on instagram um if anyone else is looking to sponsor the isrc pro circuit or any of the other um isrc leagues there are two more uh two other ones the championship series and i believe you still have the truck series or is it the late model Late model series we got we got a sponsor for the championship series but we are looking for a sponsor for the spring showdown yeah so if anyone's out there you know wants to sponsor us uh go ahead and do it you know hit up uh hit us up on instagram or mess yeah messages on instagram or uh, i believe you have a website they can go to um check it out but uh, we'll be back on Sunday night for our Sunday doubleheader with uh, ISRC and the Core Racing Series. So stay tuned, and we'll be back at you real soon.